Hello, in this video we are going to set up our digital sketchbook. The first thing we're going to do is open Photoshop. You can look in the bottom of your screen next to your Windows icon where it says type here to search and type Adobe Photoshop and you will be able to see your program if you have it installed. So you will open Photoshop and then you will get a window like this. You can create new by clicking on this document right here that says, or this little button that says create new, or you can go to file new or hit control N. So you'll see the shortcut right next to the command. So any of those will give you a new document. I'll hit the create new button. When your new document prompt pops up, what you will do is you will enter the exact specifications um, that are on your directions. So your title for everything that you name in this class, you want to put your name on it. So you're going to put your last name and then underscore shift minus and then your first initial and then underscore shift minus and then the title of the project. So this is called your sketchbook. So we are going to call it sketchbook. S-K-E-T-C-H-B-O-O-K. -E we are going to set this up as a U.S. paper document. So instead of, it'll, it might say default when you open it, we're going to use U.S. paper. We're going to use letter. We're going to use 8.5 inches by 11 inches, which, is, which will already be set up. If you choose letter as your file type, it will already be 8.5 inches by 11 inches. And 300 resolution is print resolution. So when you choose something that is in the print category, it will put it in 300 resolution so it will be printable. Our color mode will be RGB color because we are using pixels. And our background contents will be white. You won't have to change any of this and you can leave all of this alone. Just make sure that it's a letter document at 8.5 by 11 at 300 resolution and then we will click OK. When your document opens, you're going to see that you have a white piece of paper in the middle. That is called your canvas. So in Photoshop, the white piece of paper is your canvas. So we are going to look, we have the tools on the left. I have my tools in two rows, I um, mean two columns, uh, but you could change it to one column by clicking on these little arrows if you want. You can also change your workspace. So the control bar is right under the menu bar. The menu bar is where it says file, edit, image, layer, type, select, filter, 3D, view, plugins, window, and help. And if you keep scrolling over, you're going to see a little icon that allows you to choose a workspace. So it looks the same in a lot of the Adobe programs. This little, it looks like a, an internet website almost. It says choose a workspace. So you're going to click on that and you have an option of essentials. And you can even reset essentials and put everything back. And then that's the way it starts when you open up the program. And then it will remember your workspace from last time and it will open it back up. But sometimes you might want to choose painting as your workspace. I like painting because it puts my colors out here so I can see it. Um, sometimes you might want to choose photography as your workspace, depending on how you're working in Photoshop. So I'm going to put it on Essentials and then Reset Essentials. Your tools, I'm going to put them back in two columns by clicking on the little white arrow. Your tools are over here. The tools we are going to use today are the brush tool. The shortcut is B. The eraser tool, the shortcut is E. And we are going to use these colors. So the colors at the bottom of your tools are foreground color at the top left and background color at the bottom. So foreground color is typically the color that you draw with or paint with. Background color is typically the color you erase with. So you can see what that looks like. 
we're going to go to our layers on our layers you're going to see at the bottom of your properties and if you can't find your layers you can always go to window layers or you can hit the f7 key which is the shortcut for layers so we are going to make a new layer we're going to leave the background as a white piece of paper that is untouched if you drew on it you can hit so let's say you drew on your background by accident you can hit Control z and undo so keep this nice and clean um, and this is leave it all alone leave it locked leave it as a background and we're going to make a new layer the way we make a new layer is we click on the plus sign for create a new layer at the bottom right of our layers panel next to the trash can so we are going to click on that or you can hit shift control in to make a new layer and the new layer will pop up shift control in or you can go to layer new layer shift control in if you do it this way instead of clicking the plus sign you can type your name right in here the name is going to be the date so the first day we started this was January 28 so 1 slash 28 so whatever date the assignment is and the prompt for that day the first prompt is scribbles so our first layer will be named 128 scribbles and you have some options for how you make your layer but you don't need to worry about those right now and we're going to click OK and you will notice that you have a new layer so another way you could do it I will hit delete and it will delete my layer control Z gets it back so if you accidentally delete it control Z gets it back I'm going to delete my layer I'm going to go to the plus sign and now I'm going to create a new layer and it will just pop up in my layers panel and I can double left click where it says layer right on top of the word and I can change it to 128 space scribbles because the first thing we are going to do in our sketchbook is scribble. So now I want to make sure that this layer is selected when I draw. So I will be visible, It will the eye will be on, you'll be able to see the eye so it's visible. Um, and it is selected which means it is now the lighter gray color and I can see that it is selected now I will take my brush tool and I will begin the shortcut is B and I will begin to draw so if I can't see the little cursor the circle that shows me how big my brush is so I can make it bigger by hitting right bracket above enter and I can make it smaller by hitting left bracket above enter. So bigger is right bracket, smaller is left bracket. If you can't see that, your caps lock key might be on. So if your caps lock is on and there's the light is showing that the caps lock is on, turn that off so you can see your brush. So the first thing you want to do is try to click and drag and make some lines and some scribbles across your page and change your brush size, make it bigger with right bracket, make it smaller with left bracket. Okay, after you have changed this around, we can also, we're gonna stay all on this layer, everything will be on this one layer today. We can use the eraser tool, which is E is the shortcut, and we can erase. And it will erase a little line through everywhere you draw right to erase what you've done okay so let's go back to the paintbrush and now let's change the color to change the color I'm gonna click on the foreground color and I will get my color picker I can use this purple color and I can select on the rainbow bar and also select in the square and I can see what my last color was and what my new color will be I'll click OK and I can paint I can also go over on the right on my color panel and I can select directly over here and change some colors. Remember, make your brush bigger and smaller. 
right? And you'll see that everything is pretty solid. I can't see through it and it has a very crisp edge to it. We can change those things. So up at the top in your control bar, it says what brush size I'm using. It says 300 and then there's a little arrow next to it. Yours might say a different number depending on what size your brush is when you click on this. But you can see your brush um, and then you can see that I have a hard round brush selected. I can use a soft round brush and if I draw with a soft brush you can see the edges are fuzzy and no longer hard and crisp. So you can use a soft brush or a hard brush. The way you change that is you slide in this little brush window on the control bar. You can slide the size up and down but the right bracket and left bracket are easier for me and you can change the hardness. So with 0% hardness, it's going to be a fuzzy line. With 100% hardness, it's going to be a crisp line. Or you can put it somewhere in the middle. And this is somewhere in the middle. So not quite as fuzzy as this line on the bottom, but not quite as crisp as this line on the top. So you can see also, I'm going to put the, uh, the brush hardness back all the way up to 100. And I'm going to choose a hard round brush. You can see that you have some options. I'm going to leave my brush no on mode on normal. My opacity, I can change the opacity by clicking on this arrow and I can make my brush a little bit transparent so that I can see through it. So this way I can see what I have done underneath this layer. So opacity can be built up on top of itself like this, or it can be um, not built up on top of itself. So play with your opacity and see what kind of effects you can get. I'm going to put the opacity back up. The flow, I'm going to change my color so you can tell. The flow, let's do this blue color. The flow, I can have a solid amount of paint, 100% of the paint is coming out, or I can have less of the paint come out. So this is 50%. So it's just not coming out as, as strong as the other ones. So if I take my flow all the way down, there's hardly any paint showing up on the brush. So it's almost like it's a little bit um, transparent, a little bit of opacity. It's just that there's less paint on my brush when I'm using it. Okay, so for your scribble layer, the only thing you need to do is play with the brushes, change the colors, and use the brushes to scribble and make any kind of marks that you would like to make with the brush tool. And get comfortable with your settings. You can also change your brushes. There's different types of brushes. If you want to go back to this brush menu and you want to change to other kinds of brushes, there's a whole bunch of different kinds of brushes like dry media brushes with like a pencil line um, and when you make that bigger and smaller you can see that it has like a real funky edge so you can play with other types of brushes on this document as well. All right. When you are done you will save your work you will go to file save as and we are going to have one document we're going to save it on our computer and we're going to save it as a Photoshop document. So put it in your, your folder on your computer where you are saving your work. I have a folder for my images and you could have a folder that's called digital art on your computer. So make sure it's not in your downloads folder. Put it in, in, a, in a new folder. So you can make a new folder and you can call it digital art and you can put it in your on your computer and then you can put this one document in here we're going to resave over this document every time we work on this sketchbook so the first layer will just stay right there and then we'll make a new layer on top of it so I will click um, open to open that folder and then I will click save and every time you save in Photoshop you get this window that pops up you're going to make sure maximize compatibility is checked and then you'll just click OK. And then you'll wait and you'll see the blue bar will go across to let you know that it's saved. And then if you make any changes to the document and you haven't saved them, you'll notice, let me make some changes. So look at how it says my title up at the top 
and then I'm going to add some brushes on top of it. And then there's this little asterisk that appears. This little asterisk at the end of my tile lets me know that I have not saved this. So I can go back and if I make some changes and I want to save it again, I can go to save as, save on my computer, and save. And then it's like, oh no, you've already saved this. Do you want to replace it? So yes, this is an updated version. So I want to replace it. I will click yes. And then I will click OK. All right, that's all you have to do. And then you can close your, your Photoshop by clicking on this X to close. Okay.